Hey everyone, it's SoCal Val here reporting for Marvel, and today I am proud to bring you a brand new edition of Fightin' Fanboys. Our exclusive interview today is with none other than Impact Wrestling superstar, world-renowned wrestler, and Marvel comic fan, Rob Van Dam. How are you, Rob? Awesome. Huge comic book fan. You know, I had a comic right book here. store. Did you know? I did. I've actually been to your comic book Heavy, store. Have you really? You weren't there that day. Oh. But I did go. Did you go there to get an autograph from a wrestler? No, I actually just went to go see it. Saw okay, all the merchandise, cool. big comic it fan, cool. action figure fan. T-shirts, videos, stuff. they had all kinds of stuff like that. And we used to have wrestlers like about once a month uh, signing autographs yep. so kids could come in there and meet meet their heroes. Yes. It was a cool experience, an expensive, but very cool experience. Well, you were obviously the perfect candidate for this interview, obviously a big Marvel fan, but when and how did you get yeah. into reading Marvel comics? Mm, well, uh, I remember like around seven years old or so when my mom would go to the grocery store, I would hit the uh, magazine stand and I'd start reading the comic books. And uh, first one I remember reading was Conan, which was Marvel, it was ultra violent, this uh, the magazine size comic and you would see like people with like blades on their hands uh, you know like go right through someone's face and it was it's pretty violent but yeah. it, you know as a kid it captured my imagination and now you're like, in wrestling Whoa. imagine that and ghost rider ghost rider number 28 evil is the orb is the first book i remember picking up that sucked me into a uh, ghost rider but uh i also liked spider-man hulk I used to have like a monthly uh, pickup deal where I'd go and they'd they'd pull my comics. That's what you that's what you call it in the business a pull oh. a pull box or or whatever. And they when they come out every because on uh, one day a week like Wednesdays mm -hmm. the new comics come out and like uh, you would come in there they'd say hi SoCal Val you'd say hi guys and then they would like you know like last week this came out this week this came out uh -huh. and they'd give you you go in like once a month or whatever. We're getting some serious comic book fan yeah. info because right all now. the titles are monthly. Yeah. And then like. Uh, a lot of times the story floats over to another series you got to read that one too and so you know if you have like four to six uh, monthly titles that you pick up then you're a pretty avid comic book fan some yeah. people have like 20 or 50 like yeah. I don't know if anyone has 50 but they probably do. I bet there's people out there in the Marvel Universe that have way over that are 50. watching this right yeah, now but absolutely. that's a lot of titles well but. that was another one of my questions actually um, you know you talked about being a Marvel fan growing up and everyone yeah. has their their favorite characters obviously I'm yes. not gonna say who one of my favorites is but I have my own favorites. Is it Captain it's America? It's an Avenger. Okay, you guessed it. Yeah. Awesome. How, how excited am I to do this interview and talk Dude, about Captain Marvel America Marvel. would be a big fan of yours. Well, if he thanks. Saw. If he I wasn't so. before, he is not. Well, thank you. But my question I'll is. I'll speak for him. Well, thank you for that. Yes. But my question is, uh, you know, when you grew up liking comics and liking Marvel, you had certain favorites. Well, you're still in the process of growing up. But right. did your favorites change as you grew up? Uh, not so much. I mean, sometimes I would uh, venture out and try and pick up like a new story and check it out. And sometimes mm -hmm. for a while, it'd be like, this is like my favorite read right yep. now. Yep. A lot of times, uh, and, and definitely like as an adult, like I enjoyed some of the adult reads more that, mm -hmm. that are not necessarily even superheroes, you know, there's like political figures and yep. like really interesting characters out there. But... As far as the characters go, um, they never really changed. I'm a lifelong Ghost Rider fan. Even, Loyal even Ghost though, Rider fan. well, yeah, and because of his character and the impact he had on me, I guess, whatever. But that doesn't mean that always, every month, that, that I've always enjoyed the storylines. There's been yeah. times, you know, where I've been like, ugh, what are they doing to my boy? You know, but. He's your boy? You guys well, are like this? My, well, he's, he's, he's from hell. You he's feel a like demon. Oh, yeah. Well, then I hope you're not boys. No, we don't really hate But out. obviously, no pun intended, you did mention what an impact that the Marvel comics had impact. on you as a kid. Yes. We're in TNA. See that tie in I just did there? Well, yes. you know, now that you're an impact wrestling superstar, how have the characters from Marvel True influenced that. your wrestling career? Um, you know, a lot of wrestlers are uh, um, were comic fans mm -hmm. or still are, you know, and I yeah. think that has a lot to do with following the dream that we chose because. Mm -hmm. I mean, pro wrestlers are superheroes, you know? I mean, think about it. And, yeah. uh, like, if, if there was a six-foot giant lizard that had you trapped yeah. in an alleyway what in would New you York do? City, who do you want on your side? Do you want to call the local uh, representative from the Sheriff's no. Department? No, Or you want Hulk Hogan having your I, back, I want right? the Hulkster to come save me. <laughs> totally, yeah. yeah. Hulkster I think versus as a lizard. Kid, I think as a kid that you look up to, uh, you know, I mean, you think about like, wow, man, if I, if I had that big buying strong, I would do this. And you think little things, you think about how you would beat up the, the bully sure. and stuff like that. But on a broader, um, you know, 
broader perspective and, and really thinking about it, I mean, if you're RVD, you might as well stop bank robbers too. You might, might as well. You're there anyway, right? Yeah. Well, obviously, exactly. you had a lot of favorites growing up, but what kind of comics are you interested in, bank, in right yeah. now? Like, what are what currently, what books are you reading right now for Marvel? Um, I, I'm not a regular reader right now, so I don't, um, so what I do is pick up the trade paperbacks mm -hmm. and the graphic novels, which usually has like five, six, seven, eight books all yeah. in one. Um, and then you catch up, you know, on like a, a whole storyline, and uh, it's it's easier to carry and read. But I have to say, and thank you for asking. You're welcome. I love reading Deadpool. I didn't know Deadpool as a, as a kid, but I am so glad that I found him like in uh, in the last few years. Definitely, uh, definitely my favorite read. He's so funny. You know Wolverine, right? Yes. Well, Deadpool went through the Weapon X program that Wolverine did, uh -huh. uh, but he was like dying of cancer. So now he's like he like uh, he's got the healing factor, mm -hmm. but he's always at the same time like deteriorating the healing kind of at the same oh. time. His face is all scarred and messed up, and and he's completely insane and he's hilarious. You're, you're drawn to some dark characters, right? He is Van dark Dan. because he would. Here. He 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 is dark because he he wants to be a good guy and a, and a hero but he kills he's actually like an assassin for hire right. and so he has like moral issues with that too wow. Wow. it's all about balance absolutely well obviously we are going into no surrender which I know we're so excited about it is the upcoming pay per view for impact wrestling I sure am actually yeah it sounds yeah. intriguing but obviously you're one of the front runners of the bound for glory series of course the winner of that series will go on yes. to the biggest pay-per-view of the year bound for glory taking place on October 14th in Phoenix Arizona now if you win the bound for glory series you could go on to main event bound for glory and eventually that means you're gonna get a shot that night at the TNA world heavyweight championship so being one of the front runners who do you think is your biggest opponent to deal with and what's your strategy going into these matches well first off when you're the whole left and show your strategy is always I'm just gonna bring me to the table what else do you need Nothing. right so um, I usually don't even change uh, my plan of attack sure. so much depending on who I'm gonna wrestle although when you're uh, going for points like we are now and you can win different amounts of points or lose mm -hmm. by all kinds of factors. You, you might see RVD going for some submission holds, Absolutely. which I don't normally do, but I got a few that uh, yeah. um, I'll be keeping in my pocket, yeah. so I may or may not pull them out in here. Because you win like 10 points, 8 points, or you lose it. Uh, I'm one of the front runners right now, but it could change, bam, like that, and all of a sudden I could it be like could. dropped out. And but, that's what makes so. the Bound for Glory series so exciting. But out of all the opponents you faced, obviously, in this series, who do you think, who, who makes you the most nervous? Who is your toughest opponent, you think, going into the BFG series? Who's Nobody makes me nervous. The, even the fans aren't going to believe that. Come on. Know. You can't fool them and tell them RVD gets nervous You're about wrestling tough. anybody. Um, but, I mean, looking at uh, some of the guys, you know, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, Jeff Hardy, there's some really, really tough competitors, and I know that these guys want this badly too, but the fans all want to see RVD back on Let's the top with the belt. Yeah. So I feel like for them, I got to prevail and come out on top. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If not for me, for them. I mean, don't you just love the RVD fans? I do, and, and they love you. Captain America loves you. Well, I hope. I'm going to look into that and see if that's true. USA. Oh, well, obviously, no. you know, going into Bound for Glory, the no. biggest pay-per-view of the year, if things really did go your way yeah. and you were in the main event of Bound for Glory, yes. what would winning the Bound for Glory series and becoming TNA World Heavyweight Champion mean to you? What kind of champion would RVD make? And how far would you go to get there? What would you do for a Klondike bar? I don't know. Okay. My, probably not anything interesting, but you're RVD. You're going to have a cooler answer. You right? are very interesting. Well, Just thanks. sitting there. Well, thanks. Lady. Um, <clears throat> I mean, first off, to be crowned the heavyweight champion of TNA, again, would put me back on track. Like when I first came into mm -hmm. TNA, I came in uh, because I planned on dominating. You know what I mean? Because I was told by Hulk Hogan, some, some people like that, TNA needs you, brother. You got to come in here. And so when That's I went in there, hey, thanks. 
I came in and boom, I accomplished and I got the belt. And I never really got to tell that story about RVD leading the cup because it was only like a few weeks before uh, there was Abyss and Janice and blood and yep. torn up outfits and all kinds of crazy yep. stuff. And then basically that that's all we've seen as far as RVD mm -hmm. as champion. Now I know and the fans know that Rob Van Dam makes a wonderful champion. Yes. Because I've had so much gold around my waist in my career. In fact, more championships than any other former mm -hmm. world champion. Just saying. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just it's just just a fact, you know, if you like facts and stuff like that. Uh, so it, it would be good for um, the company, good for business, and obviously good for RVD. I would like to be uh, that number one spot again, be the champion, and then have everybody else that's always crying about how they're the best acknowledge people, yep. look up to the champion, yep. Rob Van Dam, and then you go crying to the promoters about how you want a title shot. That's cool. I never duck anybody whenever I have a title. <laughs> I even recommend that they bring in other competitors. Uh, go to Mexico, Japan, whatever. Bring them in. That's how I defend the title. Right. And wouldn't that be awesome? That would be awesome. Yeah. I personally am definitely rooting for Rob Van Dam. I'm on the road. For Glory series. I'm on the road. Best I got of luck to you. Why, thank you so, so excited Cal to see it. Thank you don't you. want to miss it, guys. Remember, you can witness the finals of the Bound for Glory series, and it's just around the corner when Impact Wrestling and Direct Auto Insurance present No Surrender live on pay-per-view Sunday, September 9th. And as always, Marvel headline news, games, and the latest in digital comics are all available to you exclusively on Marvel.com. I'm Tina Knockout, SoCalVal, and this is Marvel, nine, your nine, universe. Yo, Absolutely. Nine, nine. Good luck.